Okay, so let's start. In this video, uh, we are going to talk about decision tree model. Uh, many slides of this presentation is coming from uh, this lecture. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, decision tree is designed to deal with uh, classification problem. Um, it's try to solve the supervised classification problem, um, which means um, we already have some data. Um, uh, this data will tell us uh, for some record um, what is the class for this uh, record. And we want to build a, a model to abstract the information and give us a, a very simple, easy to understand model uh, uh, to uh, transfer, transfer this uh, to be a knowledge. Um, and decision tree is not the only model uh, to solve the problem. Actually, there are quite a lot of them uh, existing. So, um, like linear classification models, we have the linear SVM, we have the uh, S uh, least square models. Uh, for the nonlinear models, we have the neural network, which is very hot right now, and we also have the nonlinear SVM, um, uh, etc. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I would like to start from the decision tree. Uh, in this video because decision tree is uh, uh, comparatively easier uh, uh, to use and the result is uh, also easier to understand. Okay, so what is decision tree looking like? So, uh, for example, we want to build a model to classify fruits, like what type of fruits it belongs to. Uh, this is one example decision tree for this uh, question. Um, for this tree, starting from the root node, the question is uh, which color the fruit has, so green, yellow, or red. And then if the color is green, it will go to the left branch. Then the next question is what is the size of the fruit? Is it big, small, or medium? If it is big, then we say, okay, it is a watermelon. So <clears throat> this is the way how decision tree makes. This is the knowledge we want to uh, study from the uh, from the data set we have. Um, once we have the decision tree, we can use this kind of simple logic to uh, deal with any new fruits. What is the type of the fruit? Okay, so <coughs> agenda uh, for the for today. Um, I will spend quite a lot of time. I will spend. Um, uh, 20 minutes, around 20 minutes, to talk about the theoretical part, um, which include the definition, the mechanism, how we build the decision tree, and also the problems we may have um, in the decision tree model. And also, um, I will give a Python uh, case study to see how we can use the uh, decision tree uh, to solve the uh, classification problem. Firstly, they have some definition. So, <coughs> our training, we have a training data set. We have a validation data set. Uh, sometimes we also call this a testing data set. We have a training accuracy, which basically say, um, we also have the validation accuracy. So for training, basically we have a bunch of data. We uh, build the model based on the training data set. So, and then we, pass the model to the validation phase. So we validate how is the accuracy of the model we have built. So if the accuracy of both the training accuracy and the validation accuracy are, are satisfiable, then we put this model into production to deal with any new records to uh, influence the class. Um, some definitions for the uh, decision tree. So we have root node which is the top, and then we have splitting. So splitting is a terminology we use when we construct the tree. We split one node into two different branches based on the values of one attribute, and then we grow the tree until we have a satisfiable uh, decision tree. We have the decision um, node in the middle, and we have the terminal node in the end, or class node, um, and we have the branches or subtrees. So these are the um, terminologies we are, we are going to use. 
Um, okay, now we can talk about um, how we construct the decision tree. Um, <clears throat> so the problem here is giving the training data set. How can we build a decision tree to abstract the information in the training data set into a very clean knowledge about how we should decide the class um, giving the attributes of one record. So typically we um, we um, build the tree uh, following a top-down a greedy search approach. The basic idea is we choose the best attributes um, to place at the top of the tree and then we separate the training data set into a number of subsets where each subset contains examples which have the same value for that attributes. And then we recursively apply the method uh, on each subset until we stop the algorithm. Um, firstly, um, I start with one example. Uh, let's say the problem is we want to have a smart method to determine whether the mushroom is uh, poisonous or not poisonous. Um, we for this data set we have two attributes size and humidity so given size and humidity whether we can build a, a, a simple model to say whether this mushroom is poisonous or not it's simple right uh, <clears throat> given this data set when we consider the tree construction we say for size we have two values whether it's bigger than t1 or smaller than t1 for humidity, we have three values, whether it's bigger than T2 or smaller than T3, or in between. Um, and then for this case, we choose, we design to choose size as the best attribute for this case. And then the data set is divided into two subsets. So if the value of the size is bigger than T1, is go to the right branch. Otherwise, it go to the left branch. So if it is go to the right branch, we can see all of the data set in the training data set belongs to the points of this. So basically it says, if the size of the mushroom is bigger than T1, this decision tree consider the, the mushroom to be poisonous. If go to the left side, it depends. So if we go to the left side, we still build another layer of the tree using uh, humidity attributes. So again, we get three different branches. So luckily for all these three branches, we can uh, concretely determine uh, the class of the mushroom. So that's why uh, we can stop uh, right here. So basically for this case, given the two attributes, this is the decision tree we get to classify the type of the mushroom, uh, whether it's uh, uh, poisonous or not. So from the example, so uh, try to give a formal uh, procedure. So given a training data set, we create a root node for the tree, and we will stop when all the examples within the node uh, have the same type or the number of examples is below a threshold. Or if no attributes are available, return the majority class. So, <clears throat> and then we will find the best attributes, um, A, and then we will divide the training data set into um, a number of branches giving the values of the attributes uh, for each record. And then we can re um, repeat this method for each branch of the tree until um, all branches of the tree uh, are stopped. So given the procedure, so the next key question is how do we know which attribute to choose? Um, this is the key 
um, a component of the decision tree method. So you need to understand um, this part uh, to um, to be confident on the decision tree method. Um, <clears throat> so we will start from um, uh, the the in, uh, one concept from the information theory. So uh, there's a there's a measurement of the impurity uh, or called entropy to measure uh, a, a subset S. So this is a formula. So basically, the formula is trying to um, trying to give a measurement of how um, uh, the level of uncertainty of the subset. So you can imagine giving a subset. Um, <clears throat> if I pick a random value from the subset, how much level of uncertainty you have on the value of the of the data? Uh, let's have some some examples. So assume uh, one uh, subset, and then there are two possible values, a and b. So if you know uh, the possibility of uh, you got a and the possibility of you got b are equally are equal. So they are both one or two. So in this case, if I pick a random value from this set and let you guess what is the value, so the confidence will be very low because you don't know this because the possibility of a and b are equal. So it's kind of random. But if I tell you before, the possibility of a is very, very low. It's 1 over 256. But the possibility of b is very high. It's 255 over 256. In this case, if I pick a random value from this set, you, it's become more confident for us to say the value you picked should be b with a very high possibility. In this case, the entropy value is much smaller. So, <clears throat> how is this concept related to the tree uh, structure? So when we build the tree, we want to basically reduce the level of uncertainty. So when we divide the tree into different branches, we want to minimize the uncertainty as much as possible. That's why how these things are connected together. Um, <clears throat> Let's come back to the example of mushroom case. So we have two choices, whether we choose size or we choose humidity for this case to uh, divide the tree. So if we choose to divide uh, based on size, um, so we, we are going to get two uh, subsets, S1 and S2. So for S1, all of them are, are poisonous and none, none of them are non-poisonous. For S2, so we get three uh, uh, poisonous and five are uh, not poisonous. So for each subset, we can calculate the um, entropy. So for this one, entropy is zero because there's no uncertainty. We are sure it is uh, poisonous. For S2, we calculate the value. Uh, similarly, we calculate the value for humidity for each subset. And then, so we choose which attributes to use based on the information gain. So information gain basically measure here, um, given the attributes, we choose to divide the subset, how many, how much uncertainty we can reduce. So this is the uncertainty before, minus, we divide the, the data set into multiple uh, small subsets, uncertainty after. So how many uncertainty we reduce? So this is the information gain. So now the problem is which attributes we choose give us more information gain. So this is how it works. So if we choose the size, then this is the uncertainty before, this is the uncertainty after, so this is the information gain. And this is the information gain we get from humidity. So this is size. Okay. Since size uh, has a larger information gain compared to humidity, so we will decide to use size in the beginning to build the tree. So <coughs> with this um, 
understood, we have um, explained the uh, procedure to build the tree. So we still start from the root of the tree, and the stop uh, splitting rule are still the same. And for each step, we start from one node, and then we choose which is the best attributes to choose given the current data set. And then we split the current um, data set into multiple uh, branches, and then based on the value of the attributes, and then we recovery uh, do this thing until we get a complete tree um, for the data set. Uh, the next part is try to give you a different um, give you a different understanding of the decision tree from a different angle. So until now we search over the hypothesis space uh, for all the possible decision trees, um, but we only keep the one uh, decision tree at one time. We don't do the backtracking in the search. We make the decision, make the decision, and we continue growing the tree. So we prefer short trees than long trees. And we prefer trees where attributes with high information gain are placed in the top. This is how the system works. Um, in a different angle, so decision tree is trying to create decision boundaries uh, with portions um, um, uh, relative to the feature uh, axis. Um, sorry about that. So. <coughs> Basically, with a sufficient large tree, so any decision boundary can be approximately uh, uh, arbitrarily uh, well in this way. So, given a two dimensional space, for example, we have two attributes, um, we can build a, a, a tree structure to um, differentiate uh, is R1 or R2. So, this is one example. So, based on decision tree, this is something we are trying to build. This is other boundaries we are trying to build. If we have more attributes, like three attributes, the boundary we are trying to build will be a bit more uh, complex. So you can imagine we have uh, 20 or even more than that attributes. Um, we are trying to build more complex uh, uh, boundaries within this multidimensional space to uh, do the classification. So if we understand this, we can uh, easily understand the limitation of the decision tree uh, model. So if the data we have doesn't mesh well with the problem we are trying to solve, we are going to have a, a complex uh, tree structure. Let's say for, example, for this example, we have two attributes, x1 and x2. We have two class, r1 and r2. So for this case, we are trying to build the boundaries. And then this is going to be the tree we are, to, we are, we are getting. So clearly, there is uh, um, not the best case. So if we can um, adjust our attributes and build a new attribute, which is a, a linear combination of, the, of both, so we can get a much easier tree here. Um, but this can be difficult in, in practice to, to have the knowledge of how do you combine the, the attributes to get a much simpler uh, decision tree. So until now we have finished the decision tree construction uh, method. So you should have a, a general understanding of how we uh, build the decision tree until now given the data set. Um, following that we are going to talk about the issues we are going to have uh, in the decision tree model. Uh, the first one is the missing attribute value. So once we have the build, once we have finished the decision tree, um, we want to use the tree to uh, make inference in practice. But what if in practice the data we have has a missing value? Um, it is very common. Um, it's, to me, it's very difficult to uh, to to solve. Um, I suggest you to avoid this case if you can, um, but if you cannot, you have a number of choice. You can assign the most common value for these attributes, 
or you can assign more complex ways of assigning possibility to each value of the attributes based on the frequency and then you um, propagate this prob um, probability down to the tree and to combine the results. Um, the second problem is called overfitting. Um, overfitting, um, so basically giving a training data set, um, if the data does not conflict with each other, we will always eventually um, come up with a tree which can work perfectly on the training data set. So which means we can classify 100% accuracy on the training data set. We can build more and more complex tree. Um, but there's a theory, say, uh, long tree uh, or complex tree is not a good idea. So we prefer to have a simplest hypothesis, hypothesis uh, that fits the data. Um, um, don't, me, don't ask me why this is the case, um, but they do have a great debate on the philosophy of science, why uh, simple should be good. Uh, how do we know we have the overfitting problem? So generally giving a training data set, so we gradually make the, um, make the decision tree complex. So as we increase the complexity of the decision tree, um, theoretically we should get a better and better accuracy on the training data set. And in the beginning, we should also get a better and better accuracy on the testing data set. But at some points, you may see a downgrade of the performance on the testing data set. This is when we say there's overfitting problem because the model has become um, overly complex trying to get fit to the training data set, which is not a necessarily good thing to do. Um, <clears throat> overfitting is a, a a quite complex problem to deal with. Um, um, there are two main uh, directions to solve the problem. Number one is you can stop the tree before it even begins to overfit the data. Um, it's easy to do. You just set the limitation on the size, but it's kind of hard to say where is the limitation. So. Um, it requires you to have some knowledge about the problem and how complex you want the tree to be. Um, the other dimensional is to say, I grew the tree uh, until the algorithm stops, and even if the overfitting problem already show up, and then I decide to post-process the tree um, to make the tree uh, shorter. Uh, this method becomes more uh, popular. Um, so there are some um, um, post-pruning post prob uh, methods here. Um, uh, you can have a look uh, later. I will not talk about this um, today. So a summary of uh, all the things we have talked about right now. So decision tree, uh, we talk about the uh, concepts and what the decision tree is uh, looking like. And decision tree, the performance generally is not as good as uh, uh, marginal max, uh, maximize uh, classifiers um, because it's not trying to find the optimum um, solution here. And decision tree induction is popular because it's easy to understand, easy to implement, and easy to use. Um, <clears throat> if we look at the um, uh, decision tree in the uh, hypothesis space way, so it's a pretty powerful uh, method. So with um, the tree become more and more complex, it can construct uh, very complex rules uh, for classification. Um, but we also know the limitations. Um, overfitting is always a big issue. So practically, you may find you spend a lot of time to try to um, rebalance between accuracy and overfitting. The next section is about the assemble methods and random uh, forests. Um, I do have a number of slices here, um, but I will not talk about this in this video. If you feel more interested on this part, you can uh, Google uh, random forest and how it works. But the general idea is instead of building one tree for one data set, you try to build a number of decision trees. 
and combine the results of these decision trees to come out the final decision. So the, the main benefit is um, is to uh, deal with overfitting and also to deal with the uh, larger data sets so you can build them in parallel. Um, um, but it doesn't guarantee um, better performance. Mostly you have to run the, pro run the method uh, to see for your case, to see whether it improves the accuracy of the model. If it do, okay, that's good. So until now we have finished the theoretical part of the decision tree. Let's go to um, the Python model to get a feeling about how we can code to implement the decision tree. Um, here I will demo the uh, decision code using uh, Jupyter, if you are familiar with this. Uh, this is a very good visualizer. Um, very good one for data uh, an analyzer. You can easily um, uh, pull out the data and see the results. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, for this case, it's give a very simple Python demo of using the decision tree classifier to uh, classify data. So, firstly, uh, import a number of libraries we, we, we use here is uh, NumPy, uh, use um, pyplot for plotting. Um, the sklearn uh, library is a, is a key library if you want to use a uh, uh, decision tree. It also contains a large number of algorithms uh, in machine learning uh, 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 material. Um, <clears throat> so firstly, let's load into the data. Um, the data set consider, uh, the, this data set is uh, quite popular in um, in, demon, uh, in decision tree uh, demonstration. So <clears throat> the data set contains three different types of uh, irises. This is a type of flower. These three flowers are very similar in looking. Um, and this task is try to classify the type of the flower based on three or uh, four uh, different attributes. So let's look at the data first. So this is a special uh, data type um, for the data set. So we get the data, all the attributes into X and Y. So for X, let's look at the first three records. So you see there are four, each record has four uh, numbers. Each number represents the value of uh, the attributes of the flower and then for y it is the type of the flower 0 means uh, uh, Santosa 1 represents to um, worthy color and 2 refers to um, the virgin color 1 refers to whatever this is let's say s 2 or 1 refers to v1 uh, 2 refers to v2 So this is the data set that we have, um, and then we are ready to build a, a decision tree classifier. <clears throat> so firstly, um, I usually do a shuffling before I build the model, so the model doesn't, the, the training does not depend on the order of the records. And then I separate the data set into two parts, uh, training data set and testing data set. So the training dataset contains the first 100 datasets, and the testing dataset contains the following 50 uh, dataset. And then I build the decision tree classifier. Uh, I determine the maximum depth is 4, um, because the problem is not that complex. I don't want to overfit in the dataset too much. And then I use the training dataset to fit um, to train the model. Let's run this. And then um, this part is to visualize where the decision tree we get based on the training data set. So this function basically um, uh, do uh, 
the uh, all the things we talk about in the slides, uh, trying to build the tree from the root, and then select the attributes, and then uh, split the um, data set into multiple branches, and then continue to do this until they reach the um, uh, termination uh, conditions. So let's look at the, what the tree is looking like. So you can see the depth is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is the maximum depth we have. Um, each um, um, conditional node contains one condition. For this one is um, petal length, smaller than 2.45. I don't know what other mean. Um, but if it is true, then go to the left branch. If it is false, go to the right branch. Each box also have a Gini index value. This value is very similar uh, to the value of entropy. Best measures the level of uncertainty in this uh, box. If the uncertainty is zero, best we are sure which class this box belongs to, we can stop. And then if not, we will continue in the algorithm until we reach all the boxes um, um, met with the terminology, uh, termination condition. Sorry. So we have a pretty good tree because all the um, termination box um, has a, a, a perfect uh, condition. We know there's no uncertainty in this case. This one is a bad case. This one, uh, we have uh, uh, two sample records here. One is a V1 flower, the other one is a V2 flower, but we can't uh, continue because this is already level um, it's already level uh, 4. So given this tree, we want to know what is the accuracy. So we run the code to see this is the accuracy. For the training data set, it's pretty high. 99%. Only here we have some problem. And then we can, more importantly, we need to check the accuracy of the testing data set. This one we get is uh, 96%. It's very high. So given this accuracy um, is uh, uh, quite satisfiable, so we, um, we can stop right now. So this model can be put into development right now to deal with uh, any new records to classify uh, the type of flower in this case. OK, that's all for this uh, decision tree uh, uh, training. So if you have any questions, you can leave comments to this video. Thanks very much for watching.